Okay, so we're back in this other scene. Um, I wanna go ahead and grab my main camera. Um, now there are a couple of things that you wanna be mindful of whenever you're looking at the main camera in the HD render pipeline and to the degree that this will affect you will somewhat depend on what it is that you're actually doing and how deep into this you're going to get. But uh, one of the things that you might wanna pay attention to is the rendering path option which um, allows you to have a lot of control over what things are actually allowed. So for example, default is just the, you know, all things included. Um, but then you can also to go to custom. And if you go to custom, then you get tons of settings like per camera settings about what parts of the lighting system and the effects that are enabled in the HD render pipeline you're actually using. So for example, I mean, I can do things like I can just turn off shadows directly um, in the, the camera, or I can enable or disable contact shadows. Um, if we had uh, our post effects set up, I could also enable or disable parts of the post effect. I could change it to forward rendering. So if I was enabling forward rendering, I could do that there. Um, in some cases, I might be looking at uh, settings like the uh, transparent pre-pass and post-pass. Maybe I don't need to have those enabled in my scene, or maybe I don't actually need motion vectors or distortion or rough refraction, like those things, if I'm having performance issues, I definitely would want to take a look at these types of things and see, you know, can I disable some of these elements without meaningfully impacting my, my visual? Um, and I could probably go into some of these in more detail, but I don't think that um, you need to know every single thing about this. I mean, like some of these things like atmospheric scattering, it's the kind of um, volumetric fog effects that you would get. And that type of stuff um, will be more relevant if you're actually using it. But if you're not, you can actually turn it off on the camera and you can pro possibly save yourself some milliseconds in your frame time to prevent those things from being uh, necessary. Um, even into the light loop, all those kind of things are, are customizable. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the rendering path default. Um, but it, some of those settings are also something that can be set on a global level. So just as a reminder, um, if you go to your HD render pipeline asset, a huge amount of settings related to everything, including shadow resolution, sky resolution, uh, reflections, and then the actual render pipeline support for different um, features are set in this HD render pipeline asset. So they're not actually set um, in quality settings in the way that you might have expected it's set right here. So. Um, if you know that your sky reflection size is too big, you can like reduce it here. Um, you can change reflections. Um, and then you can also do all the same settings that I just showed on the camera uh, on a global project wide basis. And then that means that essentially uh, it should use that setting for the default if you have the camera default set. So hopefully that, that all makes sense. So it's like, I will have to regenerate my reflection. So, okay, so let's go ahead and, and take a really quick look at a few options that we have. Um, so first of all, we have our um, post-processing system. We actually have to set it up. Um, and so I'm gonna go ahead and create a, um, we actually need two post-process elements. We need a post-process layer. Um, and that's gonna be what determines what the main camera does. Generally, it's a good idea to at least um, have your camera on like the post-processing layer or create a camera layer for that. Um, but basically what it does is that you have your main camera, you have the layer that it's in, and then the post-processing layer says which layer is it's using for post-processing. And it assumes automatically that if you put a post-processing layer on the camera that the trigger or the object that's gonna control it is gonna be that camera. Um, you can set a couple of things for anti-aliasing and that kind of thing. We don't have any custom effects, so that's not gonna affect it. Um, but then we're gonna go to our post-process volumes, and I'm going to, in this case, create a post-process volume that is just attached to my camera. This is gonna be my global post-process volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is a global post-process. Um, I'm gonna set a priority of zero, and I'm just gonna create a new profile that I get to use here. Um, now I wanna add an effect for this. So I'm gonna go to Unity. Um, I'm gonna add a few things. I think one I want is uh, color grading. I think that's a common one that's useful. I'm gonna go to Unity Bloom. I'm gonna to go to Unity Ambient Occlusion. I'm gonna to go to Unity uh, 
just do some chromatic aberration. We'll just use these. So I'm going to expand each of these. And because this is my default, I'm going to expand them and I'm going to select all of them. Um, okay, we'll try to go through this relatively quickly because I just want to give you like a little bit of an idea of how this works. Um, so these defaults are basically just not affecting anything if you don't, um, don't actually enable features. So for example, here, um, I want to do some tone mapping. Um, and so I'm going to do the ACES or the ACES um, tone mapping because this is basically like a filmic tone mapping. Um, now, if I want to actually see this in real time here, um, I can also make sure that I've got my post-processing settings here. I can turn on off image effects. Um, but for right now, I think, yeah, so that'll be okay. Um, so if I'm not with the camera selected, I actually will see the same settings in my scene view. Uh, but when I have the camera selected, it's uh, it's actually showing that in the camera preview instead. Um, so uh, let's say maybe I'll go ahead and increase my directional lights brightness a little bit so that I get a little more you know contrast in the look so we can mess with that. Um, so then I'm going to go ahead and go back to my camera. So we did that ACES setting. Like obviously I can adjust the color temperature or things like that. Um, I can sit, change my post exposure if I want to make it brighter. If I want to adjust contrast a little bit, I can do that. Um, usually I try to have kind of a light hand on this and this ACES setting is actually usually pretty good um, for uh, generally just having like a, a reasonably solid looking camera setup without having to do too much uh, with it. So you can, um, however, if you wanted to mess with that, you could also go to custom and then custom can give you a lot more control over the specifics of like, so for example, the toe strength and the toe length, if you're not familiar with those kind of things, you can kind of mess with them and see what they do. Cause it shows you the custom curve of how it's producing the lighting variations. And you can, you can tweak those settings to get something that's you know, more to your liking. So having that, that kind of control is useful. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go down to the next one. So we have bloom. So bloom starts at an intensity of zero. Um, so I'm going to change that to an intensity of one. Um, and then we're going to see like, cause I'm going to try to make it so that you can clearly see what's going on here. So if I have a really high intensity here, I can either adjust the intensity or adjust the threshold. Um, generally I don't want the intensity to be super high, um, because it starts getting crazy. Um, but if I make the intensity, then the threshold is just determining what the, um, what will actually get caught in the bloom. So you can see that there's kind of like a little bit of a subtle brightness here. Um, and then if I were to say, you know, add a light into the scene, like if I go ahead and uh, 3D light, point light, um, if I move that around, you can see how that's creating a little bit of a bloom or a flare from that. And so you can see that that bloom is working as intended. Um, in my camera, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my ambient occlusion. Again, I, I think this is a little annoying because of the way they do this, but just keep in mind, they default these to doing nothing. So if the, you want your ambient occlusion, for example, um, you're going to actually have to change the intensity from zero to like actually doing something. So um, a ten intensity at one usually does a good job. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, what it's doing here if you're looking at that uh, that intensity. And you can also edit these with the profile. You actually don't have to have the camera selected because this uh, profile applies to everything. So I have my main camera profile. So I can change this to example for scalable ambient obscurance, but this one isn't available in the render pipeline right now. So multi-scale volumetric obscurance is uh, pr pretty good. Um, and so I can change the thickness to, to determine how much of an impact this is going to have now uh, there's direct lighting uh, strength is um, basically like when you're talking about how much the ambient occlusion is being affected by lighting. So you'll see this bot button for ambient only. Um, that's basically determining whether or not uh, ambient occlusion is going to display where there's shadows or where there's lights. Um, and so you'll see here, for example, if I turn off ambient only and then I do the direct lighting strength, you can see that it actually produces those same shadows in the direct lighting. Uh, whereas if I turn on ambient only, 
um, I can turn off that and it'll have a little bit more uh, impact. Um, so yeah, so the direct lighting strength just is you know determining what um, what uh, is shaded based on whether it's in the light or it's not in the light. And generally you don't want it to have the direct lighting strength because those are the things that uh, end up making it look unrealistic because ambient occlusion tends to look more accurate when it's in the shadow. Um, and then the uh, ambient only is just determining whether it's being affected um, by ambient lighting or not. Um, and so then the last thing here is I'm just going to quickly uh, do a little quick um, chromatic aberration. Um, you can turn it on to fast mode if you need it to perform better but not look quite as, as soft. Um, if we add in another setting, we could do something like grain. Um, and as we increase grain, we could make a the, the camera look like it has a little more like a like a camera like a film camera effect. You can also adjust the size of that and you know what you want to what you want to do with that. So there's a lot of different options uh, for these. And so if you have used the um, the post processing settings before, I'm sure you like them. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff, and at some point I want to do a video where I discuss how we handle um, making post settings that uh, we could customize our own, make our own custom post settings, and there's some cool stuff you can do with that. Um, it's all fully customizable, and what's cool about this stuff, though, is that you can actually, again, because it's volumes and all these things relate to volumes, you can mix and match things quite easily. So, uh, for example, uh, if maybe I'm inside here, and inside I actually want to have a different setting than I do outside, I could go ahead and say maybe I'm going to go to create a post-processing profile, and then I could say I have an indoor post-processing profile. And in this case, maybe I only want it to affect one thing. Like maybe I just want to make it so that it um, changes color grading. And maybe I only want to change it um, on a few of those settings. Like maybe I only want to actually change the post exposure. And then I can add in, maybe I could do a bloom setting. And on this one, I only want to change the intensity. Um, so if I wanted to say I want this different indoors, uh, there's a number of ways I could do that. But one very, very easy way is that I can just go ahead and I can create uh, a new empty object. I can add a post-process volume. This time, I don't want to make it global. Um, I'm going to find my indoor post-processing profile. Um, and then I just need to add something that will allow me to determine whether this change should take place. And normally that's going to be something like a collider. So if I make a box collider on this, it'll actually already show a display of this collider as if it were a volume that I'm creating. So I can go ahead and I can say, for example, change the size of the collider. And say I can just put this roughly into here. Um, you know, I'm just gonna make some quick changes just to edit that, just so I can kind of see, you know, roughly where that's gonna be. Um, and then what I can do is I can then just say um, what layer I want this to affect. So, for example, I could possibly have it affect be a uh, post-processing layer. I can make this a trigger, um, and then I can make sure that in my camera my camera is going to be affected. Let's see, go to my layer. Um, so it's layer post-processing, so that all should work. Uh, so let me go ahead and slide my camera in here. So I have my camera. Um, I'm going to go to game object, align with view. Um, so I'm indoors here. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna take a look at my indoor post-processing pro profile. And I'm gonna adjust that po uh, post exposure a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna make that that bloom look like it's, uh, you know, obviously this is not how I would normally want this to look, but that gives you an idea of kind of how the process takes place. Um, and then if I were to take that volume and I could just, you know, name it for clarity. If I were to turn that volume off, 
then that would uh, cease to affect things. But it would also cease to affect the camera if I move the camera out. So if I say if I just slide the camera out of that volume. Um, and then the, the same is true if um, I were to apply another feature for that. So if I were to add a new component and make this a normal volume, so whereas it's uh, not global, I can go ahead and create a new one. This is gonna be my indoor volume. And then I could go ahead and say, well, while I'm inside this volume, for example, I might want my HD shadows to be only like 10 at a max distance while I'm inside that. Um, and that'll work as well in the same way that this uh, post-process volume is. But you'll notice that each of these settings also has like a blend distance. So if I have a blend distance of one um, on this one, and then I have a blend distance of one for that one, um, as I move the camera out, uh, what you'll basically see is that as it goes through that one meter of distance, it'll have more of a gradual fade. Um, and that'll all just be contextual based on what it is that you need for your environment.